So today we're uh, here with PTX Metals, uh, ticker PTX on the CSE, and the company is in full swing exploring its W2 project in the Ring of Fire, I think it is, as well as the Paul Timmons joint venture, which contains another two promising properties. We are speaking to CEO Greg Ferron today to hear the latest. Welcome, Greg. Hello. Good morning, Bjorn. Nice seeing you again. Hope you're having a good summer. Uh, so far, yes, uh, it's looking up. But uh, Greg, Good to talk to you again, and as it has been a while. Um, so to start us off, please give us a short 30, 45 seconds elevator pitch of what PTX Metals is all about. Okay, sure, yeah. So yeah, we're based in uh, Toronto, Canada, and we, you're correct, we're listed on the CSC and under the symbol PTX, and we're developing uh, two projects, a copper nickel project in the northern part of Ontario the, uh, at the resource stage, and we're in an active drill program there. So happy to give you some highlights today on that. And then we also have a very interesting gold uh, portfolio in the Abbot Tibby in the southern part of Timmins with a partner called Fan Camp. And we're uh, exploring Heenan Mallard and the uh, Shining Tree projects. And we're active there. Just finished up uh, some work in the field uh, this month. Hey, thank you. So that give us, uh, gives us a bit of context. Um, but let's get into it then. Uh, tell us about the W2 project to start off. It's uh, location, neighbors, what exactly are you looking for? What have you achieved so far? Okay, yeah. So it's been a couple of years since we uh, put the the package together through four or five different acquisitions. Uh, it was an Inco project. Uh, they drilled it back in the early 80s. And, um, and then we just finished an exploration program after getting the permits. And uh, during that program, we acquired a, a large resource area within the uh, land position. It's quite a large land position, which which is quite interesting. Uh, the the vendor didn't want to sell it, and it had a, the bulk of the drilling, about a hundred holes by Inco and uh, Aurora Platinum. So we're currently modeling that resource, and it's got uh, quite a bit higher grade um, compared to the balance of the project. And so what we've been doing the last year is modeling that and uh, now we just finished an exploration program outside that resource area so we've been okay. successfully expanding the zones so we did four exploration holes uh, two of them were quite successful expanding the the zones by more than four or five kilometers to the east and then we did three uh, infill holes across one of the main zones that we do own and quite happy with the results we're hitting you know it's a very large system we're hitting wide 100 meter type uh, intersections of low grade copper nickel very continuous over the 100 meters or 150 meters in some cases and within that then you get into some higher grade uh, zones of copper nickel platinum palladium okay so uh that's where you're at now and i guess uh the next stage is so when you say you're modeling the resources is getting to a resource um that's that going to be this year still and and what other other activities will you undertake at that project and what is the overall goal goal for the time frame of the next 12 months let's say yeah yes yeah. so for 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 w2 it's in a newer copper nickel camp northern part of ontario and there's a real push from the governments and the industry to, to develop this camp much like we have in the past with sudbury so there are a number of, of large players up there. You've got Barrick up there, uh, Juno, Wailu, uh, to give you some examples. And what we're currently doing is, is a resource. We'll have that out in August. And uh, what we'd like to then do is that's that's taking to the drilling we've done, but most of it's historical drilling by Inco and, and FNX. And we'd like to go out and then drill and confirm some of these holes in the resource area. So that's a big milestone uh, this year. And, and the resource is just going to give us a lot of color on the size of that, where we would drill that uh, to convert it. And uh, it's drilled quite shallow in that area, so only down to about 150 meters. So obviously, we'd like to extend those holes uh, deeper, like in the AP zone, where you have these three 400 meter uh, intersections. And the other thing we're working on is metallurgy. We're doing it in, in partnership with the University of Carleton. We're going to be doing some metallurgy on the project just to understand better the recoveries and uh, how to improve the coveries for some of these uh, lower grade uh, uh, commodities. That That's the the focus uh, this year. So the resource will be out in August, and then we'd look to uh, do that confirmation drilling of the resource area later in the year, and the met metallurgy would be sort of around October, uh, November okay. timeframe. Okay, well, the, that that's very important. Uh, 
I mean, it doesn't get uh, a lot for a lot of investors. It doesn't get their blood boiling, so to speak. Uh, that's that's what the drill results do. But metallurgy is very important. So certainly looking forward to hear uh, what you find out there. Um, so that's uh, copper, nickel, PGE uh, on the W two. Um, but uh, you also have, uh, as you alluded to, a joint venture with FanCamp um, called the South Timmins Joint Venture. And that's about gold. And I think you hold the majority, 75%. Is that is that correct? And tell us how this cooperation came about and which projects it encompasses. Sure. Yeah, happy to do that. So it's in the Abitibi, so in the southern part of Timmins. Uh, so earlier this year, uh, I am gold put into uh, uh, production Cote Lake Gold. It's a very large mine. And uh, both the projects, Heen and Mallard and Shining Tree, are in that camp. Um, so there's lots of infrastructure. I think there's five operating mines and mills within about 100 kilometers. So the idea is just to develop uh, the resources of these projects. So Shining Tree, as you know, was a small past producing mine. So we're actually opening up that mine now. We've been stripping the, the top of it. We bought from Alamos because we know there is some underground production. And we'll begin drilling that in the fall. So we spent a lot of time with our uh, our partner fan camp on that. And what we did is they had some interesting projects in that camp that we liked and they liked Shining Tree. So we did a 75-25 a uh, split and they're now continuing to fund. In total, there's about $3 million between an equity placement and an earn-in uh, to become 50-50 partner. Uh, we remain the operator and we've had some uh, great results over the last year. In, in December, January, we drilled uh, a discovery at the Heenan project, which is just no north of Cote. And uh, then at Shining Tree, we've had some very successful trenching, very high grade results, opening up that uh, the top of that uh, past producing mine. And as mentioned, we'll be, uh, we just finished a field program uh, in July, uh, sorry, in June and July. At, at Heen and Mallard and Shining Tree. So we'll announce those results next week. And then that's mm -hmm. that's paving the way for us to begin uh, back drilling the, the projects. Okay. So uh, while you have your work cut out for, for this summer and fall, uh, results and uh, uh, drilling coming up. Uh, so that's pretty good to hear, a resource in, there too. Um, so let's say it all goes according to plan and the time frame you envision I, I know it's not quite realistic in in the mining business but um let's say it all goes uh, to plan where would you like to be at the end of the year with w2 and uh, those gold projects okay well i think with, with w2 i mean <coughs> getting that resource out should help uh hopefully we'll start trading in line with other projects with you know say a, a comparable resource I think that's quite an interesting asset. Um, you know, we have a bit more de-risking to do. And ultimately, I think a project like that needs to be, in, you know, in the hands of a larger producer. So we'd be looking to eventually exit through like a strategic investment or a sale of that asset. And in, in the meantime, you know, we'll continue doing the, uh, the de-risking. We talked about drilling the resource, um, the metallurgy work and looking to expand uh, the project. And, uh, you know, Shining Tree, th that joint venture is the way it's structured. It's we're both equity holders, us and Fan Camp. There's a separate board, you know, separate accounting. So ultimately the goal of PTX is to, to divest some of these assets. So through, for example, you could list that company as a separately publicly traded company and dividend those shares to our, our separate shareholders, uh, have a separate team running it. And, you know, but what we're looking is, you know, more success uh, as we grow the gold resources or, or make additional acquisitions. It should have the, uh, you know, the uh, the attention of the market to, to spin that out into a separate uh, company. And that will ultimately uh, unlock a lot of the value within PTX because we've got sort of the, the three different subsidiaries. You've got the copper subsidiary we own 100 percent of. Um, then we've got 75 percent interest of that gold joint venture. And then we've got a 51% equity interest into a uranium spin out that we're looking as well to uh, divest uh, this year. Yeah, tell us a bit more about, about that shortly. Uh, what's the, I think it's called Green Canada, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's the name of the sub subsidiary right now. Okay. And so the, is there projects uh, already in there or do we have uh, something in mind that you would uh, will bring in there after the spin out or how is this going to work? Yeah, sure. 
Yeah. So over the past couple of years, you know, we have been actively adding new projects or, or enhancing, you know, the current projects. For example, with W2, we, you know, we bought that, those key claims within the center of the project that heads the resource. In the case of uh, the gold portfolio, we brought in some interesting projects from Van Camp and a partner. And then with Green Canada, we figured that ultimately um, we had some non-core assets, uranium and, uh, and, and a rare metals project. So we spun that out. We raised half a million dollars with some very uh, good investors based in, in Toronto. And um, and yeah, so we currently, we currently own the equity position in that. The key asset is a uranium project in the Thelon Basin as well the, as the Athabasca Basin as well. And we're just doing due diligence on a number of different, more advanced stage assets right now. And hopefully we'll be able to close one of those in the, in this third quarter. And then we begin the, the listing process of that uh, sub and have a separate management team running it. And we'd be a, a large equity holder. And then ultimately we'd want to dividend those shares to the existing uh, shareholders now of, of, of PTX. Okay, interesting. So a lot of uh, stuff to look forward to for uh, investors and people uh, looking at the company. Um, so um, I guess you could say now is a very interesting time to take a closer look uh, at uh, PTX because a lot of things seem or uh, sh should come together for you. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, we just hopefully we, we see uh, stronger um, markets <laughs> in the fall. Because uh, as you know, the the large cap markets and the commodity prices are quite quite robust. And uh, mm -hmm. but we, you know it's in the summertime right now, and I think uh, as the uh, as we move into the fall, we should see stronger junior markets. And then you know we'll, we'll, the good news is we'll have some uh, positive announcements over the uh, balance of the year. Okay, so that uh, would be great timing. Uh, it's coming out now and uh, of the fall, um, and hopefully into a, a stronger junior market. Thank you very much for taking the time talking to us.